Well, I'm on the farm today and uh, thought I'd uh, come over here to uh, my hay barn and uh, it's just a beautiful day here on the farm. Uh, temperatures up into the upper 50s. Uh, there's a bit of a breeze at times. Uh, it's a little uh, crispy, but with the sun uh, bearing down on you, it feels pretty good. But I wanted to give a hay update for November uh, here of 2023. And probably, <clears throat> if I had to describe things uh, in a nutshell, I would say it's slow. Um, our hay sales of, uh, I mean, we sold, we sold a fair amount of hay in here, and uh, and then some. This is uh, some second cutting cow and goat uh, hay. We've sold a, a pretty good chunk of that. And uh, but we still have considerable second cut hay. Uh, when we get to the hay off the round bales, I'll make those available for sale. And then down underneath the the second cutting you see over there is first cutting hay. Uh, so kind of like I said in another video, uh, uh, farm to the table. Uh, some restaurants that's that's how they dress their menu and that's kind of how we're doing it here so i didn't want hay uh this cut stacked over here and that cut stacked down there and that cut stacked over here i basically wanted to pile it in here and keep as much free space as i could to uh, back equipment into and that's why uh, my first cut is buried and that's why these round bales are sitting out here like like this they've still got a bunch of second cutting uh, in and around them, but uh, we have uh, raised our prices. That's part of the reason we're not selling hay. And uh, as uh, you know, as uh, the the weather changes, and uh, you know, it's just kind of a supply and demand thing. Uh, uh, different hay suppliers uh, begin to sell out. We have repeat customers that come. And then we have people that come because uh, they just kind of knee jerk uh, and they don't buy hay when they should and then they come to us. Uh, I've got one lady that uh, wants hay and uh, she uh, sent me a text message and said uh, she wanted hay but she couldn't get it till after Thanksgiving. Could she send me a check to hold it? And I told her no. Uh, we just don't hold hay anymore, and uh, and uh, so I said I think we're going to have plenty. And of course, in the back of my mind was our pricing is such right now that uh, the cheap hay buyers aren't going to come and buy hay until they can't find it anywhere else. And uh, I can wait them out, and I can uh, hold this hay uh, into January, February, even in the next year. I'm not too concerned about it, but. This was a customer I'd had that I mentioned had texted me. This is a customer that I'd had uh, that was kind of a one-and-done customer from a few years ago. And um, as I recall, made a big fuss about my hay, uh, how great it was, and then never heard a peep. I never heard a peep out of her, out of, out of her again. And uh, so... After she got done, uh, you know, texting and and uh, telling me that she wanted hay, uh, I went and looked at her Facebook page on uh, and and saw where back in September she had uh, uh, made a recommendation for somebody else's hay and. Uh, I mean, I'm not looking for favors, but if you're going to plug my competition, don't expect any special favors from me. So that's kind of what I'm dealing with. And uh, so next week will be the short week before Thanksgiving. And uh, this is a Sunday afternoon I'm making this video. But... Uh, Next week will be a short work week on my day job, and uh, 
sometimes we sell a little hay over Thanksgiving. So we'll see. But again, I'm not too I'm not too concerned about it. And uh uh it just kind of is what it is. But again, to kind of sum things up, I'd say slow is where we're at right now. So I kind of bombed the channel with the uh, John Deere X750 uh, and uh, had some friends ask me uh, who saw the video what I'm going to do with uh, this guy right here. And and I've got uh, quite a few of these old Cub Cadets and wheel horse tractors and i got a couple of simplicities, but uh, they're not going anywhere. Uh, I still like tinkering with these old tractors and... Uh, but I'm, I've put the uh, John Deere X750 away uh, until spring. And uh, so I'll have some more videos on it. Now out here, uh, i got to finish running the bush hog across this field. And uh, again, that's kind of a, a winter project. And we're up on the hill uh, mowing keep trying to keep the pasture up there from growing up into all of we do that once a year and uh, we've just been plagued with flat tires uh, my brother had a couple of front tires go flat on his tractor and and i've got one rear tire on my other massey ferguson that's flat this farm all 350 i'm having uh gas issues with it and uh, what's going on, I've got debris coming into the, the inlet of the, of the fuel bowl. And uh, oddly enough, the tank is pretty clean. I'm kind of surprised it wasn't just caked with rust. But this guy right here. And uh, so I've ordered a... Uh, I've ordered a... Uh, kind of a vertical standpipe, if you will, that, that is a screen. And uh, so I'm going to be uh, draining this gas. There's not much in there. And uh, I'm going to try to uh, clean out that gas tank a little bit. There's just a little bit of debris floating around it and enough that went down into that, uh, into that uh, passageway to that fuel bowl that clogged it up. And, and we kind of brought that on ourselves because uh, we ran this thing dry on uh, fuel, and that and that's what sucked it in. But one thing for sure, this farm all, if it gets gas, it runs, and I mean it just it fires right off, and it just runs. It's uh, one of the best gasoline engines uh, I've ever encountered, and so I'm very anxious to get this tractor going because you know when it's 20 degrees up here I don't like to uh, attempt to start the old diesels uh, on the Massey 50 or my 1105 because uh, they just I, I think my 1105 would fire off but uh, the Model 50 Masseys they've lost enough compression over the past 60 years that uh, they don't really like uh, cold weather but this guy right here, I believe it could be 20 below zero, and it would fire off on the first uh, revolution. And uh, so, I also like to use this thing to move wagons around and and uh, position equipment and things like that. So, uh, I'm right anxious to get the Farm All 350 uh, moving again. And I think that'll happen. I should have my parts uh, maybe next week and over the Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, might be able to get this thing might be able to get this thing going and now uh, back to this field right here uh, I'm going to be uh, uh, running the uh, Massey 50 later on today with the loader on it my number 2 model 50 Massey and uh, just continue to kind of trim this field back there's a fair amount of grass in here, even though the autumn olives were uh, dominant 
there's still a fair amount of grass in here and uh, I'm reluctant to hit this with uh, Roundup at least in the coming year I, I'm beginning to think that I'm beginning to think that uh, I might have in here what I need to make some mixed grass hay except you know obviously I gotta mow these sticks down and pick up a few sticks like that one right there anything it will uh, foul up my uh, hay equipment but I'll be running a riding mower across all of it and if I can do that then I have no problems uh, coming in here with my hay equipment uh, you can see right in here when I had a video where I mowed this with the uh, 149 now I mentioned tires and a flat tire on my other model 50 well we got that's kind of a a theme I guess with uh, some of the tractors we got up here and uh, but this one the the uh, the tire is actually starting to delaminate <clears throat> and uh, right here it's all rusted out you can't even put air in the tire because the valve stems all jacked up so I'm just kind of running it I'm keeping it off the hill uh, so at some point I've got to pull this wheel off and uh, put a put a new tire on it's too bad because there's still quite a lot of tread on here and uh, I'm not sure this one is coming apart it actually doesn't look too bad but it's got issues too with the rim and so one of the decisions I have to make is is uh, do I buy new tires uh, for this tractor or even use tires for it and keep going with it or do I try to pick up something else but I'm inclined to just this seems like a good running tractor it probably needs a clutch uh, it probably needs to be split and a clutch put in it PTO clutch uh, it some tires on here the brakes need serviced uh, probably new seals uh, that's not too bad uh, this model 50 does not have planetaries like a 65 and uh, I've seen some videos on YouTube it doesn't look too bad to uh, pull the seal on the axle uh, and 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 their drum brakes the, the whole job doesn't look too bad uh, I need to have some tie rod ends put on here and uh, I'd like to replace I should probably just run them, but at some point I'd like to replace all these hoses. This is a decent, uh, this is a decent front end loader. I want to, I want to get this uh, uh, bracket right here welded, uh, pulled up and welded down fast on here, uh, and then I want to take somehow or another. I haven't quite figured it out. But I want to have a, I want to take this front end loader and uh, take it off and have somebody make a, uh, an attachment plate that we can hook a quick attach, like for, for a skid steer to it. So I can buy uh, just an off shelf uh, bucket and, um, uh, a hay spear and even uh, you know forklift uh, that I can put on there for unloading pallets and uh, I think the lift capacity on this thing is around 16 or 1800 pounds it's not a ton so I can't uh, lift uh, one ton uh, bags of fertilizer and what I had last summer that you saw were uh, they were 1000 pound bags and uh, so for the trailer I got and you know what I'm what I'm working with here uh, a thousand pounds falls in the, the comfort zone on this loader just fine and if I can get the uh, center of that spear pulled on back 
uh, I think I'll have something in terms of uh, a fairly uh, a fairly good uh, round bale uh, loader tractor because uh, they're only four by four bales. I mean, they might weigh 500 pounds, maybe 600 if they were a little wet. Uh, we're not we're not uh, we're not uh, loading up, you know, crazy uh, heavy uh, round bales of hay. And so, uh, in as much as there's very little money at all in round bales, I don't want to uh, sink a pile of money into a tractor that would otherwise obliterate whatever profit I might get. Uh, another thing I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to buy another uh, bush hog. I've been talking about 15 foot bat wings, but. I may settle for a I may settle for a seven foot or even a six foot or one of each uh, just to get my cut a little wider than the than the tire tracks. But I'd like to have a pull behind uh, bush hog I can put on the farm all back there. Uh, I've seen some YouTube videos of some guys running some eight uh, eight foot uh, bush hogs, but they're not going down through stuff like that. But uh, if we could get, if we could get that uh, farm all on a uh, pull behind where we're just pulling up to it and dropping a pin, that would be a uh, a snappy little uh, hook up and go, and uh, I would probably stay pretty busy uh, just trimming around here with the farm all. And then I got a new Holland 56 rake somewhere over in that jungle uh, that I, I got to get going. It's a dolly wheel rake. And it would be perfect on that. Uh, it would be perfect on that farm all. So again, we're just kind of cleaning things up around here, uh, doing a little maintenance, uh, kind of setting their sights on uh, 2024. I've been watching a few uh, videos on uh, different ones uh, uh, running their combine through their uh, their row crops or corn. And soybeans and a lot of them are finished uh, for the year uh, and they and you know when I when I see that they're when I see that they're done you know uh, and obviously we're done with their hand it makes me anxious for uh, when we're gonna get going again so you know you get down to the end of the year and you work your tail off trying to get the hay in the barn and you're ready for a break but uh, at some point you kind of uh, start getting the itch uh, to get going in, the, you know, for the following spring. So, uh, pretty happy with some of the green growth on this field. Uh, might hit it with a little fertilizer and some herbicide this spring, and just kind of take what I got uh, j again, just to help clean it up and uh, take some thatch off here. This would probably be round bales and. Uh, so that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. The uh, over there's the Farmall 350, and here's the Model 50, uh, my number two Massey. And I'm gonna get busy running a bush hog with that thing here in a few minutes. Uh, but I thought I'd just bring you up to date on where we stand uh, on our haying efforts and uh, sales. Again, it's kind of slow. We're just kind of taking it easy, uh, waiting on. Uh, to run out the clock on winter and uh let's get into next spring and see what we can do hit the like button subscribe comment share and we'll talk to you later